Greetings and welcome to the step-by-step -step walkthrough for the capture the flag exercise known as Mr. Robot. In this lab you will attempt to capture three hidden flags using the hacking methodology. This CTF exercise has three hidden keys in different locations. Your goal is to find all three. Each key becomes progressively more difficult to find. The level of expertise for this CTF is considered somewhere between beginner to intermediate. There isn't any advanced exploitation or any reverse engineering. The lab requirements for this particular CTF are one virtual install of Kali Linux and one virtual install of the VM Mr. Robot. The CTF uses a custom VM OVA file that can be imported as an appliance in either VirtualBox or VMware. The Mr. Robot OVA file is approximately 704 megabytes and it downloads very quickly. The site is well maintained and the links for the downloads are in the lab file. For this demonstration I'll be using VMware Workstation and I have both my Kali and Mr. Robot VMs up and running inside of the terminal. Now if you click on the Kali Linux and you look at the settings for your network adapter make sure that you use the same settings for your Mr. Robot virtual machine. So they both got to match up. If you don't do that, you're not going to have connectivity and you will experience epic failure. The first thing we have to do is to discover what network IP addressing we are using for this particular scenario. So we got to treat this CTF as if we've never been on the network before. To discover our network range, we're going to use the utility NetDiscover. Just go ahead and type in NetDiscover and hit enter. Give it a few minutes and it's going to come up and it's going to run through all the different possibilities for networking, IP addressing, and then it's going to give you the results. My network discovery has completed, and I'm looking at 192.168.145.134 as my target. That's the machine where Mr. Robot is currently installed upon. All right, so that's going to be our target. So make sure that you understand that this is my target, not your target you have to discover your own IP address. Now that we have discovered our potential target, we need to go ahead and do an Nmap scan so that we can determine what ports and what services are currently running on the target. These are going to be looked at as possible areas that we might want to exploit. So I've typed in the Nmap and I've typed in the long command. Now this is available up inside the lab and yes, there are different Nmap switches you could have used. Go ahead and hit enter and we'll wait for this scan to complete. Our MMAP scan has completed and we look at the results here in my terminal and we see that SSH is closed using port 22 so that's not going to be of any use to us but port 80 is running and it's running in an Apache HTTPD server so we know that this is actually a web server and it's running the Linux kernel so we know enough about this machine now that we can proceed on with doing some more discovery. To find out what vulnerabilities and what possible venues that we can attack up on side of this Apache web server, we're going to use the nicto space dash a command along with the IP address to scan that machine for any vulnerabilities. So I've gone ahead and typed in the command. I'm going to hit enter and in just a few moments we'll get back the results of what vulnerabilities are currently present. Well we found a number of interesting vulnerabilities and some interesting facts about this particular machine. First off, it is running WordPress and so we're going to have some fun with that but right now we're looking at some of the vulnerabilities we discovered and we're going to start off with the server leaks. So we see that the server is leaking inodes via the e-tags in the header of the robots.txt. This relates to the CVE-2003-1418 vulnerability. These entity tags are an HTTP header which is used for the web cache validation and conditional requests from browsers for resources. The Apache mod negotiation is enabled with multi-views which will allow us to use a brute force attack in order to discover existing files on the server which use mod negotiation. We have a number of alternatives for the index such as the index.html and the index.php file and these can be used to provide us with more information about what's on the website. 
We have some WordPress pages that are going to be of interest to us, such as the WP links, WP-login, and the WP-admin. We also have a license.txt file that may provide some identity to what type of software is actually running on the site. This can help us get some version information sometimes, not all the time, but it might help us with identifying what version of WordPress is actually running. That concludes our initial footprint of the Mr. Roba web server. And we got some really good information. So we can go ahead and get started by accessing as much as we can of the Mr. Robot site. Now, the only way we're going to be able to access the Mr. Robot site or the VM is using a web browser. So go ahead and open up Kali. And what you're going to do is you're just going to type in the IP address of your web server, or in this case, the target, Mr. Robot. So remember that this is my IP address for my target, not yours. Your IP address will differ. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And this is a pretty interesting website. This is well coded. You'll see that as it starts up, it becomes interactive. Now this is all from the show, Mr. Robot. And I'm not familiar with the show. So if you are, then you have actually seen this before. Now you have some commands that you can actually type in to this website. For instance, if you want to join, you can just type in join and it comes up with some more script asking you to go ahead and input your email address, which of course we won't do. You won't find much useful out of this particular web page, but you're free to go ahead and explore, type in the commands and see what other type of interactivity you can get into. From our previous web vulnerability scan, we looked and we found that we had some inodes that were leaking via the e-tags on the robot.txt file. So that should be our next stop. So I'm going to go ahead and place that into my web browser up here. And we're going to go ahead and get on over there and take a look at that. And here is your first key. So the robot.txt has a couple of files that are of inner interest. First is the fsociety.dict, which is dictionary. And we have our first key, which is key one of three. The next thing we have to do is go ahead and make a folder on our desktop and we're going to start moving some of these files that we need or that we have discovered over to that folder for use later on in this particular lab. So we're going to be saving the fsociety.dictionary file along with the key-103.txt. Let's go ahead and minimize our browser and we're going to close this one out. Now I'm going to open up a terminal and we're going to go ahead and clear this. Let's begin by going ahead and changing the location over to our desktop using the CD command. Once you have that typed in, go ahead and hit enter. Notice that your prompt changes to let you know that you are now inside of the desktop directory. The next thing we need to do is create a directory on the desktop. And now you're free to call this anything you want. I'm calling this directory Mr. Robot. So I'm going to use the mkdir command to create the directory. And I'm already on the desktop, so that's where it's going to be saved. If I hit enter, you'll notice that the directory, the new directory, pops up onto my desktop. So we're going to use the wget command to pull this fsociety.dictionary file off of the target and bring it on over here to my desktop. So I've typed in wget space the actual path to my target and what file or what directory I want to capture. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and you'll see that it did capture it and here it is right here. And I'm now going to just push this on up into the folder that I want it to be in. Just like that. We're now ready to copy over the key-1 of 3.txt file off of the target machine and bring it on over here to my new directory that's sitting on my desktop. So I've gone ahead and typed in the command. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now it appears on my desktop and I'm just going to push that up inside of the Mr. Robot folder. Now you can open up your Mr. Robot folder and you can open up either one of these. The fsociety.dictionary is just a very long word file. Uh, contains a lot of different words, a lot of duplicates, and we're going to work on trying to fix that in just a moment. Now the key that we have to have is inside of this key-1-of-3.txt file. 
if you open it up, you see that there's your key. Now this is just a hash and it doesn't mean anything. You can go out and you can try to break this hash, but it doesn't resolve into anything. So it's just a key that is used to represent the first flag. So our dictionary file is way too big and it contains a lot of duplicates. And so what we're going to do is we're going to shorten this down from the 850,000 words to approximately 11,000. So let's change directory on over to the Mr. Robot folder. Notice that my prompt changes to let me know that's where I'm at now. You can do an ls to check the contents of what's inside of the folder and we see we have our two files that we downloaded. We can look at the word count inside of the fsociety.dictionary file just by typing in wc space dash small letter l followed by the name of the file. In just a moment, it comes back and it tells us that it contains 858,160 words. So we're now going to make this file much smaller by using the following command. We're going to say cat space fsociety.dictionary or .dict space pipe space sort space dash u, which stands for unique. We want to sort all the words inside of this dictionary, make them unique. And then we're going to look at what the new count is by using the WC space dash L command. So let's see what happens. So it comes back up and we've gotten it down from over 800,000 words to just 11,451 unique words. So the next thing we want to do is just go ahead and save this smaller file using a new name. So I've typed in basically the same command and this time I want it saved as a unique file and I want to call it something different so I'm going to call it new F Society dick and I'm going to hit enter and it comes back to the prompt letting me know that the command completed successfully. Now if I do an ls you'll see that I have three files inside of my Mr. Robot folder. So now we have key one in the bag and we're ready to move on to the next part of the CTF which is looking for keys number two and key number three. Well, that was our first key for this particular CTF. And going forward, we're going to find that the next two keys aren't going to be as easy. To recap, we were able to do a vulnerability scan using the NITCO vulnerability scanner. And we came up with some in interesting information about this robot.txt file. And that's what led us in this direction. That concludes part one of this series on the CTF Mr. Robot. Now there's going to be two more short videos and each one of those is going to be broken down for the remaining two keys. See you in part two.